Starbucks is without a doubt the world's largest and most recognized coffee company. So I wanted to make a video looking into whether or not it was deserving of that fame. Hey team, welcome back to another Levi Save the World Hildebrand episode. Today we are going to be talking about Starbucks and whether or not it lives up to the hype that it receives. Now if you haven't been on this channel before, maybe this is the first video you've ever seen here. I do these brand audits every month or so, analyzing a different company that people find popular or they enjoy to figure out whether or not they're living up to the standards that we should expect of companies in the 21st century. I am stoked to announce that we have another giveaway going on over on Patreon. We'll be giving away this 10 tree toque along with your own clean canteen insulated coffee mug, a matching water bottle, and the Bellroy sling bag, which actually fits one of these bottles so you can look super hipster walking down the street with your morning cup of joe. If you don't know, our Patreon page is also where you can support this channel. It helps us continue to make independent reviews like this. Plus, you get access to behind the scenes content like our secret monthly podcast, behind the scenes footage, and even exclusive Patreon only videos. But now let's talk about Starbucks. Starbucks is a US-based coffee franchise that was born in Seattle, Washington in 1971 and quickly went on to world domination with over 28,000 stores. It's a cultural icon that has really set the specialty coffee trend on fire. See, before the age of the Frappuccino, coffee was mostly just brown, burnt water that you made at home. The second wave coffee movement, mostly led by Starbucks, set out to take the coffee industry to a whole other level with a specialty boutique coffee experience that anyone could enjoy. Now over the years, Starbucks has come under a lot of scrutiny from coffee snobs and they generally come to the consensus that Starbucks coffee is not good coffee. But that being said, they sell a lot of coffee so they have to be doing something, right? Right? Well, let's get into it. So typically what I do for these videos is I go online and I spend a couple of hours digging through all the information I can find about a particular company. And then I aggregate an idea or a general gist that I've discovered based on those findings and I relay it back to you. But I thought for this video that I would do something slightly different. Because Starbucks is such a huge employer across the world, I thought it'd be interesting to ask you if you had any experiences as employees or managers working at Starbucks and what that insight might tell us about the company as a whole. The team really didn't hold back on this one. So after reading through all of these responses, here are some of the themes that I picked up on. Number one, it's a good job. From the messages I received and what I found online, it looks like Starbucks really takes care of their employees. Most Starbucks offer a better than average minimum wage and cheap healthcare for full-time employees, but they don't call them employees. Starbucks refers to their nearly 300,000 staff members globally as partners. But this is more than just a nice label. Starbucks actually rewards partners for long-term employment. They get yearly stock options for every continuous year that they're employed through something called the Beanstalk program. They get free online college in select areas, some parental leave, and free drinks while they're at work. Add all of those things together and it's easy to see why they have the lowest turnover rate of any service industry job on the market today. Now the flip side is this. First of all, this is just what people should expect from a job. It's ridiculous that getting parental leave and access to healthcare is not just a standard that everyone receives. But to receive those things, you have to be working full-time hours at a very intense work environment. Service industry jobs for anyone who hasn't worked in one are extremely stressful and physically strenuous places to be in eight hours of the day. Number two, they don't understand recycling. Like as a concept, really. I got so many messages from people telling me that the garbage and the recycling labeled cans actually go into the same bag. Now this is obviously super frustrating, but it's a symptom of a broader issue that Starbucks seems to have with taking their environmental impact seriously. But here's the thing, 
Starbucks promised that they would make a 100% recyclable cup by 2015. And by that same time, they would also be serving at least 25% of their orders in a reusable cup. And they freaking did it. Now, of course, I'm joking. They didn't do any of that. They failed miserably on both accounts and then just ceased to talk about it ever again. <clears throat> to make matters worse, actually, the cup today is not recyclable or compostable in any way whatsoever. It's, it's just garbage. And this habit they have of not doing anything meaningful is everywhere. Their plastic straw ban that made headlines across the world doesn't stop straws from being served at Starbucks. Every frappuccino and most specialty drinks require a straw and only in states and countries where non-plastic straws are required will they actually use a compostable option. But let's not dwell on the four to six billion cups that are disposed every day and the two billion straws that are thrown out simultaneously. And let's look at something good that they do, which is food donations. A lot of people talked about food donations. Now, this is actually a policy that Starbucks has that they give away food at the end of the day to homeless shelters and other people who need it in the surrounding area. Unfortunately, this policy wasn't applied evenly across all branches. Some people talked about it happening all of the time or some people felt like it never happened at all and some were encouraged to take stuff home while their manager wasn't looking. And this is an interesting problem because Starbucks didn't do a franchise model because they wanted to have control over the entire operation. But we still see that one policy is not applied evenly across the entire chain of command. But there is another initiative that I found even more interesting. Welcome to the Yates Street Community Garden. This is where Leah and I grow our vegetables. In 1999, Starbucks launched the Grounds for Your Garden program, which allowed people like you and me to get grounds from Starbucks to put on their gardens. Now our growing season is just getting started here in Canada, but I thought I would head down to my local Starbucks to see what this plan was all about. So I have an interesting question. Do you do the, the grounds for gardens thing? Grounds for gardens? It was pretty clear that the staff at this particular branch didn't know what the Grounds for Garden program was. But after a bit of convincing and explaining, I got what I was coming for. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? This is so weird. Now, despite the oversized bag, technically the Grounds for Garden program worked in my area, but I have some other thoughts on the subject. Now my garlics and I are going to explain why this is bullshit. In order for this program to work, people need to know that it exists and Starbucks has made no effort to advertise its existence. On top of this, Starbucks is such a huge company. I mean, the one here locally does compost their coffee grounds as they mentioned, but they could easily make composting an important part of their business all across the world and they don't. But at the very least here, I'm gonna put these grounds to good use. But disposing of your grounds after they've already been used is not nearly as important as where you source your coffee in the first place. Much of the issues associated with coffee is the environmental and social impact of getting coffee beans. Starbucks proudly announces that they source 100% of their beans in an ethical way. This is verified by an organization called CAFE, Coffee and Farmer Equity Practices, which is done in partnership with Conservation International. This is one of the first third-party certification systems in place for the coffee industry, and it started back in 2004. Its success is largely attributed to the fact that Starbucks got on board because they were such a huge international player. Now this is good, don't get me wrong. Starbucks coffee beans are going to be better sourced than anything you can get at Dunkin' or Tim Hortons. I talked about how terrible Tim Hortons is in another video, so if you are Canadian or just interested in the Canadian coffee chain, you can check that out through the link down in the description. But the reason why I included air quotes around ethically sourced is because coffee is a very complicated crop and it's sourced in areas that typically have 
conflict, or extreme poverty. Cafe practices help ensure a living wage for the people growing the coffee, but it doesn't do anything for the long-term viability and sustainability of the farms that they are trying to cultivate. See, to create the volume necessary to supply Starbucks stores, monoculturing and pesticides are almost mandatory. So while Starbucks was once an innovator in the space, they've sort of become outdated as new, more ethical and thoughtful business practices are coming into the coffee space. Starbucks also isn't very progressive when it comes to using your own container. Speaking of reusables, do you wanna win this thing? You can join our Patreon page and you can win that along with its own matching water bottle, the Bellroy sling bag, which fits the coffee mug perfectly and your own toque so that you can look like a hipster while you're doing it. Of course, the link to our Patreon page is down below. It helps us do what we do on this channel and allows us to do really cool stuff like give away 100% of our AdSense revenue, which is another thing you might not have known if you just stumbled upon this channel. Since COVID hit, Starbucks stopped using reusable mugs, which is understandable for an organization of their size, but they already seemed a little confused about how to use reusable before the Panda Party. I had a bunch of messages from people describing instances where workers would make their drink in a disposable cup to then pour it into their reusable mug. Now, I don't blame the employees in this situation. This is a huge organization with a lot of top-down regulation. The people who are making your drink are just a product of the environment that they're a part of. To avoid this kind of wasteful situation, you can make your coffee at home, which is cheaper and usually better. And Lee and I made a whole video about how we make our coffee at home as waste-free as possible. But on top of that, you can always support your local coffee shop. No matter the circumstance, your local coffee shop is always going to be more flexible and more willing to adapt to customer needs because they have the power and ability to do so. Starbucks is a huge organization. A decision made in one office affects 28,000 stores. Now I know for a lot of people, Starbucks is more than just where you get your morning coffee. The process of going to an establishment that you recognize, buying a drink that you know you'll love, and getting that hit of caffeine in the morning can become a bit of a ritual. But I think that not many people actually look at the impact that this has. Not only does buying your coffee out cost an insane amount of money, as Graham Stephan will say, but there's so many other environmental factors that are out of your control when you buy your coffee at Starbucks. So I'm not saying that we need to boycott Starbucks because for a lot of people, it might be the only option. But I encourage you to think about how you get your morning coffee and whether or not there's a better way that you could be doing that. I'm gonna leave all the links down below to the other coffee related content that we have on this channel. And I would love to hear what you have to say about Starbucks in general. Have I missed anything? Is there stuff that people need to know? Do you work there? Do you have any feedback? I would love to hear what you have to say down in the comments below. But regardless of that and what you think about the coffee industry, I wanna thank you for watching today's video, for taking the time out of your day to spend some of it with me and for that weird little moment with Leah. And if you are subscribed to this channel, then we will see you in the next one. <laughs> yeah.